Hey guys, this is Damien with Dame Tech back with another video. Since many frequently asked in several of my videos on what iPad is the best, I decided to make a guide amongst all of Apple's latest iPad models. I've had ample amount of time with each of these iPad models and therefore we'll be comparing the latest iPad Pro, iPad 9th generation, iPad Air 4, and iPad Mini 6. I will use a 5 point rating scale to evaluate each of these iPads in 4 important categories, performance, multitasking, gaming, and affordability. With this scale, we can determine which iPad is the overall best, as well as what iPad may better suit your specific needs. Now let's start with performance. Here we can see the iPad Pro with the latest M1 chip scoring the highest in CPU performance, while the iPad Mini 6 housing the A15 Bionic chip coming in second place. The iPad Air 4 with the A14 Bionic chip comes in third, while the iPad 9 housing the A13 Bionic chip coming in last place. This same order also applies to GPU performance, and here are the results. Now let's look at a more realistic scenario. Let's quickly do a 4K video compression test, as this is a great way to test the real-life productivity performance in each of these devices. And to my surprise, in this test, all the iPads compressed the 4K video footage fairly quickly and were within seconds apart. The iPad Pro finished first while the iPad Mini 6 comes in second, the iPad 9th generation is third, and surprisingly the iPad Air 4 comes in last. Therefore, looking at both benchmarks and the 4K video compression test, I'd say the iPad Pro scores the highest at 5 out of 5 due to the powerful M1 chip. As for the iPad Mini 6, I'd also give this a 5 out of 5 as the A15 Bionic chip is impressively fast and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with even the A12Z Bionic GPU housed in the iPad Pro 2020 variant. Now as for the iPad 9 and iPad Air 4, both of these devices score a 4 out of 5 as productivity performance is relatively the same but still beats other tablets and many mid-tier laptops. Now let's talk about multitasking. Here's where the iPad Pro 12.9 inch really shines. I primarily use my iPad Pro to do all of my YouTube video and graphic editing. And to be quite frankly, the 10 to 11 inch size tablet is bearable, but definitely feels limited with screen real estate. Note taking, split screen, and again, that editing all feels best on the 12.9 inch size and not to mention the 120 Hertz mini LED display. Therefore, for multitasking, I'd rate the iPad Pro a 5 out of 5, the iPad 9 and iPad Air 4 a 4 out of 5 due to screen real estate being great, but still limited for multiple apps. As for the iPad Mini 6, sadly, I'd have to rate multitasking a 3 out of 5 as multitasking is difficult due to the small form factor. Productivity may be limited to one app at a time. Now let's talk about gaming. This is where things get very interesting. One would think the obvious answer would be the iPad Pro as the best gaming tablet. However, this is sadly not the case. Comfortability is just as significant as performance. But before we approach this subject, let's quickly talk about gaming performance. Right off the bat, 95% of games run perfectly in all four of these devices. Even the iPad 9 is powerful enough as the A13 Bionic chip is no slouch. But for that 5% of games that are demanding, this is where these iPads start to differentiate. Let's talk about Genshin Impact. The iPad Pro runs this game at a stable 120 FPS at lowest settings and somewhat 60 FPS at max settings. I must note, the iPad Pro runs this game at an extremely high resolution compared to other devices. The iPad Pro runs this game around 1600p compared to 900 to 800p found on iPhones and iPads and 720p found on Android phones. Therefore, if you're wanting to play at max graphics, your iPad Pro will eventually throttle after 10 to 15 minutes and overheat as this device cannot sustain 60 FPS at max settings and 1600p resolution. You'll definitely have to lower resolution to medium settings, which is around 1300p, to have that better chance of achieving stable 60 FPS, which of course is still higher than max resolution for iPhones, other iPads, and Android devices. As for the iPad Mini 6, this is where the device really shines. Even with Genshin Impact, because of the lower in-game resolution, display size, and chipset, the iPad Mini 6 runs Genshin at max settings, stable 60 FPS, best battery life, and comfortability. You don't have to worry about tweaking settings because everything works right off the box. 
As for the iPad Air 4 and iPad 9, sadly, both of these devices are not capable of keeping a steady 60fps at max settings. But, both devices still produce very good performance results. Settings will have to be lowered a bit to produce that stable 60fps. I typically average between 47 to 50 FPS at max settings with the iPad 9th generation and 53 to 55 FPS with the iPad Air 4. In conclusion, the iPad Mini 6 wins in this department with a 5 out of 5 due to all the features that I mentioned earlier. As for the iPad Pro, this device comes in at a 4 out of 5 due to the performance being just as amazing, but comfortability, whether using the 12.9 or 11 inch size, being slightly uncomfortable in long gaming sessions. As for the iPad 9 and iPad Air 4, these devices also suffer with the same slight comfortability issues in long gaming sessions. However, due to both devices also having slight performance limitations with games like Genshin Impact, compared to the iPad Pro and iPad Mini 6, both of these devices get a 3 out of 5 in my book. Last but not least, let's talk about price to feature ratio. The iPad 9 wins in this department hands down. You get the best bang for buck. You can get the iPad 9 Gen for as low as $329 US and still have amazing performance and productivity. The iPad Mini 6 is the second cheapest starting at $500 US and has the best gaming performance when looking at the form factor and power. The iPad Air 4 starts at $600 US while the iPad Pro 11 inch starts at $800 or $1100 for the 12.9 inch size. For pricing and feature ratio, I'd say the iPad 9th generation is a 5 out of 5 for pricing, level of performance, and form factor you get. As for the iPad Mini 6, I'd say it gets a 3 out of 5 due to the amazing performance and best gaming experience, but limitations in multitasking. However, work can still be done if you use one app at a time. As for the iPad Pro and iPad Air 4, these are more on the high-end side, especially for what the iPad 9 is already offering. However, I must note, both the iPad Pro and iPad Air 4 both have Apple Gen 2 Pencil and Smart Connector Keyboard support, which does increase performance capabilities, while the iPad Pro has that additional 120Hz display and Mini LED with a 12.9-inch size. I'd give both devices a 4 out of 5 when looking at the price-to-feature ratio. However, pricing is still on the high-end side. In summary, the iPad Pro totals at an 18 out of 20 score rating, while the iPad 9 scores a 16 out of 20, the iPad Air 4 scores a 15 out of 20, while the iPad Mini 6 scores a 16 out of 20. It seems when we tally all the scores, the iPad Pro wins as the overall best tablet. However, when looking at the scores, the other iPads aren't too far behind, which means you really can't go wrong with either of these devices. The iPad Pro is overall very good in all categories, but is the best with productivity, while the Mini 6 is hands down the best in gaming, but not too good for productivity. The iPad Air 4 and the iPad 9 are good in all areas, but not the best in any category. Nevertheless, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what was your personal scoring with these four devices. With that being said, Thanks for watching, please be safe, and see you next time.